Hey, I'm Bodacious Beast. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Scotty Allen Day. I do videos about the past, present, future, and unknown. Today we're talking a little bit about uh, insurance baiting. Now, insurance baiting has been around for quite some time now. However, uh, well, a lot of people are not aware of what it is until they get into a, uh, you know, a commercial driving uh, job. A lot of people that have trailers also notice this. And, you know, things like, uh, well, when, and, and the way it works is when somebody, when like the city or county or state shuts down a uh, private street and, uh, and uh, detours everybody down to another block. Now, it's, oh, and by the way, I'm not on a bus today. I'm on my day off, so I just figured I'd drop in a video and, you know, just, just something that's randomly on my mind kind of give you you know away from my work environment when I'm on a break trying to do a vlog uh, but insurance baiting not not necessarily happens every single I mean everywhere insurance baiting happens on blind corners so basically what people will do is take a vehicle a trailer a camper a boat that doesn't quite work very well anymore. Uh, and they'll park it right there on the corner. They know everybody's gonna come around. Uh, they can park the boat right there on the corner and they'll park, they'll park a pickup on the other corner just to tighten the road down. Now they know that a 40 foot bus needs to take at least two lanes to turn. So the, so the less space they give them to turn, the better chance they can be able to get hit. And because they parked it on the street, and it's parked and they're not around, it puts the driver 100% fault. And some insurance companies know that, but they know that they can be able to get away with it. They know that the people that uh, put it there can get away with it. And there's really nothing much that you can be able to do. Now, doesn't make any sense to me because all they do, I mean, they can polish it up and make it look pretty and, you know, once it gets hit, if they're parked the wrong way and it gets hit and they say, well, the vehicle's out of commission, the engine's not working right, they take it, they take it to a mechanic shop, they could actually get it totaled, they can push the value up a little bit more because the insurance company doesn't know what the, car, what the vehicle looked like at the beginning. So they can be able to push the value up more instead of turning around and scrapping it. Uh, I know some people that have done it. I've seen some people that have done it. I mean, their their uh, Toyota Corolla is leaking oil and doesn't run anymore, so they just push it out on. These people literally pushed it out on the road. About three days later, it got hit. Now, instead of it going to the scrapyard for thirty-five dollars, they got about eight, nine thousand bucks out of it. Out of a dead broken down car because the insurance company totaled it they totaled it because it's non-running they're not going to bother with it they're just going to give the guy the cash payment and that's it and it bugs me I mean insurance baiting also is part of insurance scams uh, insurance baiting also means a guy that's uh, crossing the crosswalk and Traffic is getting ready to go. Crosswalk signals going. Uh, the guy crosses about halfway through the median. Somebody turns around, tries to, tries to make the right hand turn. I mean, the left hand turn, and the guy turns around and goes, "Oh!" and then starts walking back. And that's insurance baiting as well. But that's also an insurance scam. But I just don't understand why people want to do stuff like that because they're just waiting for that accident to happen. The, the odds of it happening is going to be about maybe one in about uh, 20,000. Maybe. I mean, a lot of people know about it. There's a lot of very experienced drivers, but they're looking for that one driver that's not experienced enough. So I really don't know how anybody can be able to 
stop this. I don't know how anybody could be able to prevent this. Besides, the cities and the states and the counties putting no parking signs close to that, I mean, on those curbs so people don't park there. But they don't. It's just one extra sign. It doesn't make any sense. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think they should actually mandate that if they do a, do a detour in the corners, a blind corner, to put no parking at any time signs on, just so it makes it easier for commercial vehicles to go around. Well, I don't think it's going to ever happen because there's a huge war on commercial vehicles. There's a huge war on commercial delivery trucks going down mega streets. If you're coming, if you're down here in Portland, it's like every other street. No turns for trucks, no turns for oversized vehicles, no turns for a bus, no turns for this, no turns for that. But if a delivery truck needs to go down the street to make the delivery, and it's easier for them to get into their position just by going down that street and making another turn, what's the big deal? Oh, it vibrates my tea kettles off the top of the shelf, and we don't want the vibration. We can't stand the good vibrations. What? Oh, come on. But, you know, I, that was just something that was on my mind, so I figured I'd do a vlog about it. That's pretty much way, who I am, what I'm going to do. If it comes to my mind, I'm going to do it. I'm going to put it up. I'm going to make sure that, you know, it's good practice. Like I said, I just started revamping and redoing my vlog freestyle come up with the subject talk about it put it on camera throw it online see what happens it's good practice to constantly process uh, thoughts it's good exercise it's good mental exercise but so what do you guys think about it drop it in the comment section below like subscribe hit that notification bell until next time, keep on rocking.